It's really starting to look and feel like summer here in our Zone 5 garden. After a number of hot sunny days, followed by some thunderstorms, the garden is starting to take off. Today I thought I'd walk with you around the garden to show you what we're growing and harvesting in mid-June. I started harvesting red Norland potatoes from this compost bin a few weeks ago. These were planted back in mid-March under cover. What I like to do is, when the plants start to die back, I start to harvest new potatoes by feeling around in the mulch to see if I can find potatoes to grab. I then gradually harvest potatoes as needed for meals, and when the plants die back completely, I finish the harvest. This gives me earlier potato harvest than if I had waited for the plants to die back first before starting to harvest. Right next to our red norlands, we have our sunchokes. I need to put a trellis on these very soon because these grow very tall and without support they can be blown over by the wind. Now let's take a look at a red haven peach tree. I only planted this tree last spring and didn't expect it to bear fruit this year, but as you can see it looks like we will get some nice peaches on the tree this year. Now let's take a look at our blueberry bed where I'm doing something I've never done before. Birds always eat some of our berries, but never so much that it's been a problem. That changed this year. They ate almost all of our honey berries and we're eating all of our strawberries. So for the first time ever, I've covered all of our blueberries and strawberries with bird netting. I just installed PVC hoops over our berry beds and then covered the hoops with bird netting. So far the netting is working perfectly to keep birds from eating all of our berries. Here in front of the blueberries we have our best producing crop of sugar snap peas ever. The plants are already taller than me and we can't eat them fast enough, but I am trying. Mmm, good eating. Unfortunately, not everything is doing as well as our sugar snap peas. Two crops that normally do very well for us are struggling this year, kale and collards. This year, our kale and collards are being eaten alive by cabbage worms. Normally, this isn't a problem for us, even though we don't use any pesticides. Instead, we rely on natural predators, like spiders, to capture cabbage butterflies and wasps to hunt down and kill cabbage worms. Unfortunately, there are far fewer wasps in the garden this year, and the cabbage worms are having a field day with our greens. On the bright side, though, wasps have found a friendly home here in our garden and have built a nest in our hoop house. We're going to leave those wasps alone so they can hunt down and kill all these cabbage worms that are tearing up our greens. Our kale and collards may be struggling, but our tomatoes are thriving. I planted over 40 tomato plants this year. Some are growing up trellises, and some, like these two sweet millions, are growing up individual EMT conduit stakes. I tie the plants to the stakes with garden tape, which won't slip, and I prune all the tomatoes to a single stem by removing the suckers. I'm also continuing an experiment I started last year in which I grow pole beans up the same stake as the single-stemmed indeterminate tomatoes. I wouldn't try this with unpruned tomatoes, but I think it will work well with pruned tomatoes. I'm only growing three pole beans up each stake. Right next to our tomatoes, we have butternut and acorn squash plants, which were started in cold frames two weeks before our last frost. These plants are nearly perfect, except for little hail damage. We grow these plants vertically, and soon I'll install one of our metal trellises for them to climb. I also need to start inspecting the leaves for squash bug eggs because I found our first squash bug of the season today. Right next to the acorn and butternut squash, we have one of many areas in the garden where we're growing carrots and beets. We're also growing Tokyo Market turnips in a variety of locations around the garden. These turnips are sweeter and more tender than most turnip varieties, and they grow to maturity in just four weeks. We've been harvesting the Tokyo Market turnips for weeks now, but the beets and carrots that were planted in spring aren't quite ready to harvest yet. And in the bed to my right, we're growing Yukon Gold potatoes, organic all blue potatoes, which are flowering. Both of these potatoes should be ready to harvest in July. And here we're growing Kushaw squash. Like the acorn and butternut squash, I started this plant two weeks before our last frost in a cold frame, and it's doing very well. Eventually, this will be a massive plant with massive fruit and it's already putting out tendrils to climb, so I'll be installing a trellis for it very soon. And moving forward, we have our music garlic, tree collards, Swiss chard, elephant garlic, and a plant that's doing astonishingly well, patty pan squash. 
Like our other squash plants, the patty pan was started two weeks before the last frost in the cold frame, but this one is much bigger than the other plants, probably because it's in one of the more sunny spots in our yard. Okay, now let's take a look at an experiment in which I'm comparing a tomato that was started outdoors under a cold frame in mid-March to the same kind of tomato started indoors at the same time in the grow room. Okay, this may be hard to see with so much green everywhere, but this is the tomato that was started indoors in the grow room in mid-March, and this is the one that was started outside in the cold frame at the same time. Originally, the outside tomato was much, much smaller, but it's quickly catching up. The indoor tomato is not only taller, but it has larger trusses and more blossoms, but that could change over the course of the growing season. If the tomato started outdoors in a cold frame, ends up doing as well as the one started indoors in the grow room, I'll be starting a lot more tomatoes outside next year. Now as a demonstration of the benefits of starting squash early under cover, let's compare our patty pan squash, which was started two weeks before the last frost in a cold frame, to our zucchini, which was started after the last frost. Again, here's our patty pan. As you can see, it's already massive. Now let's look at the zucchini, which is also a summer squash, but it was started after the last frost. As you can see, it's much smaller, so there definitely seems to be an advantage in starting our squash early in cold frames. To finish today's tour, let's harvest a few strawberries. These plants were picked clean by birds just days ago, but now that they're covered with bird netting, we finally have some fresh strawberries to harvest. Wow, these strawberries are really good. I hope you enjoyed this tour of our backyard garden. We also have a lot growing out front, but it's difficult to shoot video out there because there's so much traffic and distractions. Even so, I'm gonna to try to bring you a tour of our front yard garden in the near future. As we close, I'll share more images of our backyard garden. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos on how to grow a lot of food on a little land without spending much or working harder than you have to.